Welcome to the South by Southwest 2021 panel on music powered community sustainability projects. We are so excited to be connecting with you all around the world as we come together to truly co-create positive change for a thriving world for all. I'm Lisa Pavati, the founder of the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance and the Sustainable Living Guide. And I'm so honored to be here with my amazing colleagues and friends whose work inspires me deeply. We are going to be talking with Rick Ulfik, who is the founder of We the World and the We Campaign. He is the co-creator of 11 Days of Unity and 11 Campaigns for Change with 600 organizations from around the world involved in co-creating positive change. He is also an award-winning Grammy-nominated composer and keyboard player who's written, arranged, and produced and orchestrated music for TV, the Olympics, films, commercials, records, and much more. And Rick, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be joining you on this wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you. We're also joined by L.V. Schooley, who is the founder and program developer of Drum the Program, a nonprofit organization in Alabama. She is a community developer who creates space that uses the art of West African drum and dance as a bridge for social change. She's an activator, a co-creator, and an educator, and I'm just so honored to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us, LV. Oh, it's an honor, Lisa. I always love any time I get the chance to be with you and be inspired by your work. Thank you, I feel the same. We are also joined by Mike Molda, who is an extraordinary change maker, holding down tech and activism in the music industry. He was the stage manager at Vans Warp Tour, working with H2 Flow, and he is the co-founder of Creative Minds Audiovisual. He's also on the board of directors of the National Hip Hop Conference Congress and created Spare Change Music Festival and has been absolutely crucial for the live stream work of so many change making organizations during this period of COVID before and after, I'm sure. And he has also helped make the work of the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance possible. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you for uh, everybody being on this panel and looking forward to uh, this great talk. Thank you, wonderful. Well, as we begin, we want to invite everyone wherever you are joining us from to take a moment to really feel into the change-making power of music, because we know all of us gathered here have passion for music and have felt that moment where music changed everything, where we realigned, where we connected with our potency, our community, our joy, where possibilities unfolded in ways that we might never have known possible. And we're so excited to be able to connect in and really harness that change making, that peak energy that is so ancient and primal and innovative and ever new that music brings through us as we embody our heartbeat, as we embody the rhythms of the earth in all our different types of music. And as we come together to create change, we're bringing forth that creative power of music. And Elvi, I want to invite you to speak into the change-making power of music. Why is this so potent? Thank you. Um, as a artist and a drummer, originally, before I began the process of learning how to dance, um, I recognize that there's something about the drum beat that is innate to our vibrational energy. 
and that expands into all types of um, musical instruments. But for me, the West African drum um, is a language and the vibrational energy of, that it is creates has the possibility to change each of us at the cellular level. And then when we ourselves become activated in that way, we have the capacity to reach others. And it creates community because the, the music from West Africa is not about one guy drumming, but the music is created via an ensemble that is a reflection of the need for community to create the sound of music. Beautiful, and that's such a core part of our, com our human experience, isn't it? The creating music with community and being in a space of music together, that that activates our embodiment of what it is to be in the world together, how we can support each other and care for the earth. And I just have so much appreciation for what you're sharing with that work on a one-to-one -one community level locally and globally. And I want to also speak with um, Rick and look at, you know, how do we connect in as, as we start with that heartbeat, right? We're right there in the drum, all music has rhythm and we're expanding from that place with um, the power of, the modern world that we live in, we have the ability to come together and bring organizations and people together and create huge change making campaigns that are powered by music and having really direct impact on people's lives on their wellness on the environment on social justice and so many different spaces that call out for healing in our world at this pivotal moment. And the work you've done is just tremendous around that. Will you tell us about more about what the work is that you're doing and why music can help create huge global change as we face the climate crisis and other crises together. Right, so thank you. And one thing we've discovered with We the World is that there are three ways that we can engage people uh, to be part of changing our societies and transforming our societies so we do actually move towards having a world that works for all. So the three ways that we uh, talk about that, in fact, we, we make it into a, like a, a little thing, three eyes that make a we, inspire, inform, and involve. Three eyes that make a we. So the inspire part that's where music and the arts com comes in. Uh, because, um, you know, people may not be that much into, you know, learning about the details of the climate crisis or human rights things, you know, the statistics involved in all of that. But if they hear someone who's singing a song that, that pulls at their heartstrings, um, you know, that the music can really engage people. And we had that experience when we launched 11 Days of Global Unity. So um, 11 Days of Global Unity was a tremendous coming together of many, many different organizations uh, to launch um, a convergence of events that that now annually takes place between September 11th and September 21st, the International Day of Peace. But we started that in 2004, and the launch uh, involved um, Jane Goodall and Marianne Williamson and many others, but also Earth Dance was a major partner. And Earth Dance does a global, or did at, the, at that point, uh, a global synchronized dance and, and music where they play one song in many countries, many cities around the world at the same moment. The other thing that happened at the launch of 11 Days of Global Unity was that we had something called the Million Voice Choir. The Million Voice Choir was organized by our dear friend Gemma Bulos, and she 
uh, is a songwriter, and she wrote a song called "We Rise," and that and she went around to choirs in every in in countries in eighty. 80 countries and 80 cities around the world, and they sang that song at 9 p.m. in every time zone leading up to the launch of 11 Days of Global Unity. And so it was, it was just uh, magical. And so that's, that's one way that uh, we have incorporated music in, in our organizing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. And you've got campaigns going all over the world for human rights and environmental restoration and justice and peace and compassion and really helping our global community come together in unity to take the large steps that are needed. There are bold leaps needed right now, and it's going to be from a heart-centered space that we can really join hands and step forward together. And what better way than music to unleash that potency of our heart to create positive change. You know, I think the, um, the future of, of the world as we know it, the planet and the wellness of, of the future generations really lives in the human heart. It lives in our, in our willingness to live love in action because we know what needs to be done. And we have the ability to make the changes personally in community, as a global community. And it's a matter of activating and energizing and keeping energized that heart to show up to take action to bring our love into action together and thank you so much for catalyzing tens of thousands of people all over the world for so long it's so exciting thank you i want to share a little bit about the eco-conscious music alliance and how we're inspired by this amazing work that our colleagues are doing and we're co-creating together to help bring grassroots action into momentum in a really deeply supported and unique way. What the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance does is we bring together music lovers, musicians, and professionals from all over the world into a community that catalyzes local action projects. And we have local hubs emerging all over the world for people who say, yes, I feel this. I feel this. I feel the impulse to create positive change. I know a brighter future is possible. I know that equity is possible, that social justice is possible. I know that we can move through this climate crisis and truly create a regenerative, thriving world that flourishes into the future. So we're coming together in our communities to say, okay, well, right now, Right here, what does my community need? Who needs to be fed? How is our water? How can we serve each other and serve the earth? And we've partnered with the Sustainable Living Guide as our educational partner to create a series of mutual aid project trainings that help people do cooperative community gardens or permaculture food forests to look at where is food going to waste in their community and how can that be redirected to those in need to address water restoration and climate solutions and whatever needs are coming up, whether it's from pandemic challenges, social justice challenges, environmental imbalance challenges that we can come together in a local space and really bring our hearts together and vision what what would we love to create what would you love to create in your community that would care for people that would care for the earth and how can we bring this music empowered global community in to support that well we're doing monthly action concerts highlighting amazing eco-conscious music musicians from all over the world from every part of the world and they're sharing their music and their vision and their projects for how we take action because first is feeling into that collective space where we share that heartbeat where we remember we're one and bringing that music in to enliven our imagination and our inspiration and to catalyze a space of shared power moving away from power over structures 
and the systems of oppression that destroyed so much of our world and moving back into power with. So we are activating our power with ourselves, our power with each other and our power with the earth. And from that space, that flow state, co-creative innate state of being, implementing positive change. I think many of us who've been in the music sphere have had these peak experiences where we're, we're dancing and we're singing, we're making music and we're, we're singing into the, the space of we're, we're going to heal the world. We are healing the world. And, and this is what we're singing. Whatever our, our different genres are, our backgrounds are, we're singing our visions for the wellness of the one. And in that peak space of possibility, often there's no action taken, right? We go to a festival, we have this amazing experience, then we go home. We kind of wish things were different. And um, with the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance and so many of these other projects that are happening, we're harnessing that peak energy of music, that powerful potency into planting seeds, into caring for each other, into learning how to move through intersectional solutions for the intersectional problems of our times. And Mike, I wanna invite you to speak into what is that space of that we, that we go to, right? When we're at festivals or events and we're feeling this incredible peak potential, how, what is that space and how do we move it into action so we don't just lose it? So it doesn't just dissipate and become a sweet memory, but it's actually a powerful seed that we can plant. Like Rick mentioned before, uh, a big part of it is being able to bring people in for inspiration and being able to bring people in with music. Because with some events, you might not be able to get um, the ability to be able to send all the information that you want from an activist standpoint to be able to really reach the masses the way you want. But if you collaborate with an artist influencer to be able to go out and spread that message, be able to be at a festival and have the message of peace out there, have the message of love out there, but then have the music behind it showcase that and really be able to have people be in their heart place and enjoy that music to the fullest and then align that relationship with those nonprofits to say hey we are here for this mission we are here to bring something great than just the music we want to bring you something else as well we want to educate you we want to uh, empower you because that's what really uh, a lot of these events are about is being able to empower the other person with the information of how can you help how can you be a part of that change? And being at festivals, a lot of times when you're at an event, you feel the love from everybody in the crowd. And being in a pandemic right now, not being able to feel that same energy being in the crowd, now being able to come back and work with Ima for one, to be able to put together such a amazing structure and platform to go online and actually be able to showcase and be able to hear some of the music that you would hear at festivals still be able to be in that same energy space because that's what it's about it's the human emotion being able to connect with the music to be able to create this energy that you're looking for and of course being in a virtual space is never going to be the same as being at a live show that's why the future of music is never going to go away with the live space, but it's definitely evolving into a new space. And I feel like this catalyst of taking the music and also taking activism and putting them together is the way that this change making can happen. Oh, thank you so much and for helping us keep music alive and thriving while we're while we're working remotely and remembering we're still connected. For example, you know, when you have your glass of water before, before you sing, before you perform, right? That same water is flowing through the oceans. It's flowing through the rain. It's flowing through all of us and our ancestors and our future generations. Yes. 
And you know, when we think about like, where is this, this flow of unity going to, we really want to be giving attention also for the future generation. And how are we, how are we living as good ancestors for the future generations? How are we creating change right now that is going to sing into the future and bring into form this dance of life that is in harmony? And I want to invite Elvie to talk about how this change-making potency is shifting culture, is creating a new an ancient container for our young people to emerge into and from them to emerge this new way of being. Thank you. Um, wow, I've enjoyed everybody's um, feelings and emotions and thought process about the power of music. What we do here um, at Drum the Program is to offer um, a lens of social studies awareness around the history of, for African Americans. Our history is not a part of the story um, in a positive way in this country. So these ancient art forms from Africa is the rest of our story. Our art form has continued to live on. You see that in the African American church, but that is a, about religion, but this art is about the human spirit. Um, and so I feel that what we offer and what most music offers when it's coming from that intentional space of love and passion and, and I want to invoke a change and make a difference in someone's life who may be hearing this is we're talking about the spirit the human spirit that longs to express itself becomes the voice of our soul. And we need more of that. And so our work with children and youth here in Alabama, we offer um, after school programming twice a year, fall and spring. And then we offer a, an immersive summer camp here on our ranch um, that allows for youth to come together and in that contained space of they are safe, they are accepted, and this is a part of your history, these drums that you see on the side of me. Um, it's made a huge impact. It made a huge impact in my life, and I was not a child when I discovered it, but I'm now creating a pathway forward through it so that one day, you know, that kid is gonna look up at me and go, this has changed who I am. This has changed how I see myself because I really do have a history that's powerful. One of the things that we're doing into the future here in Alabama, um, we just finished out our last concert of Congo Square ATX in Austin. It was a four year experience supported by the city of Austin Economic Development and the Vortex Theater. And our last event, um, aired in November and it was a huge success. Um, I thought, oh no, virtual, that's gonna change everything. But what it did was expanded our audience. And so it was a beautiful um, experience to recognize that, you know, the power of intention around what the work we have to do is the reason why we meet with success because we're not just letting the things that are changing around the world keep us from moving forward. So here in Alabama, we will be hopefully in 2022, um, recreating that cultural event. And I'm very inspired by this uh, panel. I would love to bring in the component of it, the Emma as, you know, part of what Congo Square, Montevallo, that's the town we live here in Alabama in. It's a beautiful, beautiful, when I say Alabama is beautiful, the environment here is incredible. So I would like, that's a vision, right? I, I appreciate these seeds that are being planted. And I also appreciate Mike's comment about that music influencer who has the intention 
of what they are singing about, their love, their awareness of the environment to create that sense of unity and change in that cipher, that space when we are experiencing music. Um, yeah, I, I love this. So that's our future. Um, one of the beautiful things that we did during the Black Lives Matter movement here in Alabama was Drum the Program facilitated the protest of art events. And it was really amazing to use music and art and paintings and people coming together to find a way to, to lend their support for the Black Lives Matter movement, but using art as that canvas, the tool that created the space that brought us all into that one moment, that time where we were willing to recognize that these are social issues that don't need to continue to be a part of the future story of this country. So our work is really about changing the trajectory of children's lives. And not just African-American youth benefit from our work because we build community spaces here in Alabama using these ancient drums. And when we create those spaces, all ethnicities, all walks of lives walk into those spaces and they come together. It is innate for us as human beings to want to be with each other. And music is a thread. It just weaves us through this fabric of life when we let it. And I think that one of the things I would hope to see more of in our own community, especially um, in the world of hip hop, Mike, is this conscious awareness about the power of language and music what are we aspiring to do? And who are we aspiring to change in life? I think that there's a need for us to really be more and more conscious of the message that we are giving our youth. So, because we are, we are responsible for the direction they're going in the future. And I really, it's not that I don't love, um, I'm a lover of all types of music, I really am. I love dancing, but I really feel that we have a responsibility and a duty. And I wish that more of our hip hop community could get that. And it's, it's essential because we, as African-Americans who love to hang on to our culture, need to be the ones reaching back and making sure these kids that are watching us are being inspired in a really good way because they're gonna be the future leading us when we're older. So what are the seeds that we're planting with music? So um, I feel that there's a hope, you know, everybody, obviously there's these projects that we're all working on are making change, but I feel like the sustainable living guide and Emma are also guides to help us really like pull all of this together because the more that we are conscious of the environment, the more that we're going to value the human beings who are a part of that environment. We're not separate of it. We are in that environment. So yeah, I feel that there's a lot of hope and this type of panel is it's juicy, it's delicious, and it's beautiful to be able to bring out these types of awareness of the power of music and really speak to positive messaging in music, right? Yeah. That's what my passion is, obviously. <laughs> awesome. You know, it's been such an honor to be able to learn about um, musicians from all over the world who are creating this positive change. And I think of um, DJ Kevin, who is a hip hop artist and an urban, urban farmer who is doing work to educate people um, about the intersection of food security and racial justice and music and hip hop and that 
when we pulse into the power that's there, we can invoke wellness. That we can we can be in that pulse of wellness as we're bringing through that music, and just have so much respect for um, musicians like yourself who are bringing through a deeply conscious invocation of positive change through their music. And thank you. I love the idea of EMA, of the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance, being part of Congo Square. I know we've talked about um, promoting with you and partnering with you and you know, getting that on the ground change making. I think it's so powerful when people can get together, have this incredible peak experience and then sit down and do planning action sessions. That's been something I've done at festivals. We're like, now what? Great. We sang about it. We held hands. We danced about it. And now where are we going to plant the seeds? Like literally, let's plant them in mm. neighborhoods. Let's plant them on balcony gardens. Let's make sure we're delivering food to the elders. Let's make sure we're planting appropriate and ample trees where we live for carbon sequestration and really shifting using our our collective genius and the human potency to create positive change as we open to that flow state that is music, where we're connected as solutionaries in an impulse of creation that moves really from, from the core of creation through us into form. So one of the things that the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance is able to do is to partner with events, whether it's an on the ground event, a live stream or an artist or an album or a concert where we can help people can actually sign up online and become part of a change making action hub and be able to take training and bring it into their community. And a really important piece of our work in the education that we're doing is to give a, a blueprint that's really breathable that can be taken by that community wherever they are, whatever continent they're on, whatever cultures are coming together and breathe their own life into it and make it their own, make it authentic for what the needs are in that community, what the values emerging are, what the unique assets and attributes, practices, and ways of being together and evolve that consciously together. And wanna to really give deep respect to the intersectionality of this moment when we talk about creating a world that works for all, it has to include everyone. And recognizing yeah. that we are, doing environmental work means we are doing social activism. They are inseparable. And I'm really excited about the, the possibilities of helping each individual emerge in themselves and what purpose they can bring to the world, what gifts they can bring to the world and how do we uplift each other. And you know, Rick, with the work that you've done bringing organizations together, which you know, there's this big, there's this global platform, there's the local, there's the local hubs, there's the regional, but eventually it's the individual, right? It's all of us, our community. A community is made of precious individuals. And when we think about that spark of action in each individual, where is that impulse that says, I'm in, I'm in, let's do this. Will you speak into that space and any advice and inspiration you want to give to there as we invite people to participate with change-making action? Sure. And, you know, I was thinking in general that music is a, a universal language, right? And it's a language that embodies we consciousness. So, and that's what we talk about all the time with we the world, we.net. It's all about bringing people together to think of themselves as part of an essential parts of the whole. So we, so we, basically we is three things for us. We is a consciousness, it's a collaboration, and a campaign. So the consciousness is about um, the idea that each member of our society, uh, the health and well-being of each member of our society is essential to the health and well-being of the whole of society, right? And of course, nothing could be more apparent than the pandemic to make that clear, right? 
So if one person is uh, has the has COVID-19 in a community, then the whole community is in danger. So hopefully the world will learn the lesson that it's not just COVID-19 that that applies to. If one person is discriminated against, then the whole of society is in danger. If one person is homeless or hungry, then the whole society is in danger. In danger. So, um, so this idea of we consciousness is so powerful, uh, and what we're doing through music and through all of these means, right? The inspire, inform, and involve. Um, we are looking to create a cultural shift that moves us away from a, a me-based society, from this like an M, to a we-based society where the, the health and well-being of each member is valued and prioritized, uh, not just in our individual attitudes towards other folks, but also at the highest levels of power and policy and in government. And also another thing is that we, the concept of we, we're looking to expand that so it's not just humans. It's, uh, it's you know, like I, I always say, when you think of we in your family, you know, we are doing okay, right? So it's, is it your family? Uh, that's doing okay? Does it include your pets? We are doing okay? Does it include your plants? <laughs> Is it your community, your parks, and, you know, everything? So we basically expand the concept of we to include all of life and the ecosystems that support it on, on the whole planet. Beautiful. You know, I think there's a, a really powerful value shift here urgently needed, long-awaited value shift that is emerging out of our shared experience of the pandemic, which is my actions affect others. My actions affect everyone. My actions affect all of the planet. They are inseparably linked. And that is beautiful and wonderful and a space of great responsibility because our choices matter and our caring matters. And we can create so much amazing transformation in that awareness of caring for each other into our actions, recognizing that we, that we are one. And yes, I love it. <laughs> um, you know, I think that as we move together globally to face the um, climate crisis, which is challenge of, of human history in so many ways. This is our invitation to reprioritize and remember our indigenous roots that whoever we are, the vast majority of our ancestry were tribal people who lived in, in enough harmony and respect with each other and with the earth to have survived. We know this because we survived. If we don't do this, we don't survive. We're seeing that impact on the world now. And how do we move beyond surviving into thriving when we move into that returning to that state of we, into that state of oneness, where we know that my actions affect seven generations, that we know that when I am returning thanks to the earth, that that is an act, that is something I do. It's not only, I'm not just saying thank you, I am embodying my gratitude, I am embodying my love. And you know, music invites us into that deep, ancient and ever new knowing that's within us, that we are one and that our actions connect and have power, so much power when we share that power together. I think the space of co-creative flow is something that's really emerging right now, that as, as artists and visionaries, we love that change-making space where we're, where we're moving and we're creating and we're absolutely in flow. And we're learning how to do that collectively right now. How can we come into flow collectively? We're leaving so much of our issues that might have held us back or, and whatever wasn't serving us. We're transforming, we're stepping into this new space. How do we have shared success? It has to be win, win, win or nobody wins. And you know, the collaboration that's happening here 
is really exciting with our, all of our organizations and the many people we work with. Um, and as people come and getting involved with the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance, we're so excited also about weaving in with other organizations, that we want to uplift each other's work, that this is the competitive um, dynamic is over. Like there's no room for it in this new paradigm. And it's time to support each other in ways that we might never have even realized we could do and are as, as Elvie was saying, delicious and delightful and amazing and inspiring and filled with light and filled with hope because without hope, there's no action. And when we feel alone, it's harder to feel hope. And when we unite, we feel our connection, which is a core experience in, in the human existence. And from that place, we emerge together an embodiment of regenerative wellness. And um, I want to ask Mike, as we come, you know, towards, um, towards the close, not yet, but towards the close of our panel, you know, I think about the individual who is having their first aha moment. Maybe they're at, they're at a festival or they're listening to some music or they just lay down a track and they're going, wow, everything just shifted. And they're standing in that doorway. And like there's, there's all of us who are connected, right? We can feel into this collective energy of global change making, of local cha locally implemented global change making. And someone who is standing in the doorway of that space, perhaps they're a young person, perhaps there's someone who is just recognizing that there is so much support for connection, for action, who's just realizing that their power is infinite as they come together with um, a caring community that's empowered by music. Like, what would you say to that person to invite them to join that active community of co-creators manifesting positive change in the world as we get lit by music and bring that illumination into full manifestation in our activism? The first thing that I would uh, ask is what inspires you? What fuels you? What fuels your body, your mind, your soul? Because when it comes to music and wanting to take action, there has to be something outside of just wanting to help. There has to be heart in it. There has to be something more. And usually when that aha moment happens, it happens, like you said, at the creation of something that you've made or you see somebody creating something and you're like wow I can do that too and uh, being somebody that has worked with multiple musicians that are really trying to find their space it's go out there and really find the musicians that resonate to you find the organizations that really push you and you want to see grow and just contact them just be a part of the movement uh, go in organize your own events be a part of the community drive um, I think as far as being a musician you are a huge catalyst and taking that talent and spreading it to the world that is the seed that we need to create the change Beautiful. thank you you know as people are, as musicians in particular, are dealing with this like live stream reality and remote events and maybe not having that direct community connection, I think it's so important to remind them that we hear you. We hear you, we care about you, we, we are grateful, we're excited about the music that you're creating and that it's being received. I think it's so important for people to know that it's being received and it's taking root and it's growing those messages that people are sharing that it really has has a needed space in the world and um is there anything that you would add to that to keep encouraging our musicians who are creating this change making music and keep that light shining bright definitely it's about getting yourself out there and now during these uh, pandemic times just getting yourself out there even with just content it doesn't always have to be live stream. Live stream is a way in today's world to be able to reach the masses and be able to get yourself out there, get the music out there and actually get somewhat of a response back. And uh, 
that is kind of the way that um, me and my organization with Creative Minds have expanded what we're doing is reaching out to musicians and actually teaching them how to get set up online. Uh, this past year, we've um, taught about 800 musicians how to get set up on live streaming, how to host their own events. Uh, we've hosted about eight festivals, multi-day festivals, where we've brought musicians in and really had them showcase um, their art. And um, we've even showcased a variety of different organizations when we do this, working with Ema, uh, bringing in those musicians and uh, showcasing the, the amazing work that Ema is doing. And then also just being able to go out and um, still be able to work with certain venues and certain studios to then hopefully slowly start integrating some of these spaces as virtual studio spaces to bring musicians back into a stage more so than just performing at a living room pretty much just hanging out in a living room and and trying to perform in front of a screen is definitely been a difficult thing for a lot of musicians and i've i've had many conversations about that but the benefit that i've heard from every single person that has gone into live stream is they're able to reach a way bigger demographic and now that the world is your oyster and you really the virtual world is out there for you you can expand and collaborate I've been able to collaborate with people from all across the world, where when we were in this go, go, go state of pre-COVID, you weren't able to have that same networking, that same ability to really reach the masses that you are able to reach right now. So we are in this weird paradigm where, yes, everyone wants to get back out and do these live events, but I think the shift here is going to be, you're going to have your localized events and you're going to have your global events where you're still going to have your live stream of uh, virtual spaces to be able to really now expand to the platform that you've made during during this last year and some advice i'd give for people that haven't gotten into the live stream space yet is just get started just get yourself out there get get yourself seen and team up with another musician that has done it before get yourself uh you know, on one of their showcases and just start collaborating with others to get yourself out there because in this virtual space, it is about the numbers. It is about how many people you have in your network, but then it is also about expanding your network to the reach of others. And that that is my biggest advice is just uh, reach out, stay connected and collaborate. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you for making all these live streams possible and keeping us connected. It's been such an amazing experience to get to work with you and learn from you and have our team be, be supported in learning from you. You know, we had envisioned before COVID for EMA to be having these live stream concerts where and we've had to explain it to people a year ago where it's like the whole world is a stage and one act will come on in there in new york and the next act will come on in there in ethiopia and the next act will come on in there in japan and we had to really describe this to people and that we would be showing these this live video at community events around the world so we could all be dancing together to the same songs and that it would also be broadcasting live. And, and we had planned this amazing launch at South by last year and then South by couldn't happen and everything you know in person couldn't happen. And now a year later, it's the norm. And we, and we really had to, you know, it took a while to try to explain to people like, what did a global concert look like? Now it's what we do. How amazing that we've really come into connection with our global music community and our global change making community and with the eco conscious music alliance every month on the third weekend of the month on sunday we do a global action concert and it will later become again some in-person events but right now they're all online and we bring together musicians from all over the world and collaborate and we're sharing their music and bringing our support system for creating community projects to their following and their community and we're bringing their music to a huge global community and it's just such a beautiful blossoming 
the second part of that action concert is about to start in this next year, which is a um, kind of like a Zoom convergence where we get together, we have, imagine you're at a local event and you're dancing and you're feeling this music together. It's being played from all over the world. And at the same time, we're dancing to the same rhythms with people all over the world who want to make a change and the supportive co-empowerment of experiencing that. And then when the music finishes, we sit down in circle and we do community planning for how are we going to care for our community? How are we going to care for the earth? How are we going to re-emerge as part of the earth and living in balance? And then we go into a global think tank, kind of like think local, act global. This is think tank local, act global. So we can come together and have conversations in a global com con container with global community about projects we're doing in different spaces and perhaps there's a challenge that is happening in one community and a community way over here on a different continent has a wonderful idea or has solved that challenge for themselves and we can really be brainstorming heart storming together about how to do local implementation that's music powered globally supported and is bringing forth possibilities for a rapidly emerging world in balance, which we need to do quickly. And we know there is a sense of urgency with climate crisis, with so much going on right now that is absolutely mission critical to be done now. It is now action. It is not later after the pandemic action. It is now action. So we're helping people in an online platform sign up with EMA which is um, our website is ema.earth, ema.earth, which is also Mother Earth, so ema.earth. And people can sign up to get involved with us and we'll help match them with people in their local community and we'll help hold a space where they can have conversations online together and then they can be in person together when, when they're able to. And, um, and even now socially distanced doing projects safely together. And we can provide them with training materials and online classes with the Sustainable Living Guide, who works with a team of advanced instructional designers. The um, protocol for Sustainable Living Guide classes was from the um, leading experts from Harvard and Brown University. It's trauma-informed. We've designed systems for trauma-informed activism and change-making. It's really... Um, an exciting space to be coming together to co-educate and co-activate as we feel that inspirational pulse. Join us March 21st for the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance Global Action Concert South by Southwest After Party. We are so excited to be featuring the new We The World compilation album that's just dropped and we're gonna have lots of their artists joining us and performing. And so excited about that. And you can find out more about Rick's work at we.net, at We The World. You can find out about it at we.net. We're also going to be hosting the Light Warriors Band and their Book of One. And they have collaborated with musicians all over the world for this Book of One album. So we have um, musicians joining us on the concert from the Diné Nation here in Turtle Island, from Ethiopia, from all over the world. We'll also be hosting Thrive Choir from the Bay Area and amazing music, but most importantly, inviting people to activate through music and get involved with change making. You can find out more about Elvie's work with Drum the Program at Drum theprogram.org and we really encourage you to look into the amazing work she is doing it's so powerful to find out about what mike does and if you're a musician and wanting to do live stream or a place that has an event that is that needs to be broadcasted out he's been doing this for this is his life's work he is such an amazing pro with the live stream that so many of us are just like trying to catch up on he's got it dialed and his um, website is creativemindsaudiovisual.com for the musicians out there, the Eco-Conscious Music Alliance is launching our ambassadors program this next month. So we are inviting you to get in touch with us. We wanna feature you on our website. We wanna spotlight you on concerts. We wanna work collectively 
to see how we can support your communities with change making projects and really amplify and co catalyze positive change together. We know that a truly thriving world that works for all is possible. It lives already within us. It sings out in every heartbeat. And we invite you to feel that love that we are together and bring it together into action. From all of us, we thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you at the Global Action Concert. You can find out and sign up for that at ema.earth.